Well, look what we have here. Two power spark units that I'm going to be recurving. And I've got my springs, secondary springs, here's some primary springs. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this process. One of these has a curve that was requested. The other one I'm just going to provide a generic fast road curve to it. Um, but follow along while I go through both of these and give them, give them better curves. So the first step is actually to remove the timing wheel off of the post and there's a small slip in here that needs to be removed. And what I like to do is I like to gently lift this up with a pry bar and tap the pin down until it falls out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get this off before I can take off the drive dock. Now that I've pried this up you'll notice the pin actually popped out with the gear. Don't lose it, it's very small. And now once I take this off, this will allow me to remove the breaker plate and then I can take the drive dog off and this whole assembly will slide right out of the top. I have now removed the pin that holds the drive dog in place, which is right there. And we can slide this off. Now there's usually a couple of shims at the bottom here to set the float. Don't lose those. And with the breaker plate removed from the top, I can just slide this straight out. Now there's a there's a bushing and some shims in here as well. Sometimes they just stick because of the grease, so just pay attention to that. But anyway, here's the distributor assembly, and I'm going to be putting this in my machine and changing out these springs to provide the curve that we're looking for. Also, I need to set the cam um, overall advance as well, so I'll go ahead and measure that next. So I've got my protractor hooked up to my distributor shaft with a pointer set up here to measure the overall advanced cam. And in a previous video, I had measured these power spark units to provide 20 degrees advance. Now, I've gone ahead and soldered some material down here at the bottom to reduce the amount because I need to be in the 10 to 12 range, preferably around 12. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this and figure out how much material I need to remove from my solder joint to achieve the correct advance that I'm looking for. But right now, we've got roughly 10 degrees. So that means I need to go ahead and remove some material off of my solder here. And we'll get to the 11 to 12 range that I'm looking for. Well, I've adjusted the stop on this cam with a file. And we should have roughly 11 and a half degrees, which is what I was shooting for. So now... I can move on to picking springs for the primary and secondary advance rates. All right, what I have here is a primary spring that I grabbed out of my bin. So I am currently testing it to see when it initially allows the weights to start moving, when it reaches five and a half degrees, and then I'm gonna check it on the way back down and see when it returns to rest because I'm looking for a spring that will provide roughly 1,000 RPMs distributor speed at 5.5 degrees, and ideally I don't want the weights to return any less than 500 RPMs. So this is spring number one being tested. All right, it started moving around 450 RPMs, approximately 650 for five and a half degrees. And then let's find out when it returns to zero. So about 400 RPMs. So I think I need to find a stiffer spring. All right, I've swapped out springs and we're gonna do the test all over again. So once again, I'm checking the release point of the weights, five and a half degrees, and then what RPM did they return back to zero? About 460 to 500 RPMs is the release point. Approximately 760 or five and a half degrees. So we're getting there. And then
Ooh, 445 when it returns to zero. Okay, seems like you need to find a stiffer spring. Spring number three. Our release is about 675 RPMs. Okay, we're about 992 RPMs at five and a half. And then let's find out when it returns back to zero. This one returns to zero at about 500. I need one that's slightly stiffer. All right, so I found a slightly stiffer spring, so I'm gonna go ahead and test spring number four. All right, it releases about 700 RPMs. 5.5 is about 983, and then let's find out when it returns to zero. About 560. So I think the spring will work. And here are the results of the primary spring test. So number four was the spring that I'm going to go with, and because it reaches five and a half degrees around a thousand RPMs. A little bit faster than spring number three and the return value is 560 which is slightly higher than number three so i think overall number four is the ideal choice now you notice it has a slightly different configuration on its loops and that's because this one actually has an extra half loop removed to make it stiffer than the one above it so uh, even though they all look the same they give slightly different results which is why you need to check them all. So now that we've got the primary spring sorted out, it's time to work on to the secondary. Now, in my hand here, I have the PowerSpark one, and I have one that I use for doing these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the one that I have used before and see what kind of curve we get, because I know that using this one, it's fairly stiff. And uh, because I've removed about half the amount of advance that this distributor has, I don't believe that this will be correct. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to this spring that I've used before and see what kind of results I get. Um, if needed, I'll either modify one of these or I can actually go ahead and modify this one as well. But I'm going to start with this one first. One thing I do need to do with these springs is I actually need to make adjustments to the loops so that it provides the correct amount of free play. So what the free play refers to is the amount of motion that the distributor has on the primary spring before the secondary spring engages. And in this situation, I want the secondary to come in at approximately five and a half degrees before this one does anything. So from five and a half to 11 degrees, this spring and the primary spring will be working together, but before five and a half degrees, this one will not be doing anything. Here's a secondary shot of what I'm trying to describe. So this is the secondary spring, and you'll notice that it is loose. When I go ahead and move the cam physically, at that point is when the secondary engages the post. And if you look in the top right, you'll notice that that is about 11 degrees. So, uh, excuse me, it's five and a half degrees. So from five and a half degrees till full advance, that's when the secondary is working. But up until that point, it's not. So I'm gonna go ahead and test the secondary operation. So when I spin this up to five and a half degrees, you'll notice that the speed is unaffected by installing the secondary spring, and that's because I've adjusted the secondary spring's free play. So above 11 degrees, or excuse me, above, 11, above five and a half degrees, the secondary spring will engage and the rate of advance will slow down. So I'm really looking for what is the maximum speed I achieve at 11 and a half degrees of advance. All right, there's five and a half degrees and you'll notice that we still are about 970 RPMs is what 
we had before with just the primary spring alone. And that's full advance, and we only have 1821 RPMs. So this spring is not strong enough. So I'm going to go find a different spring for the secondary. All right, I'm trying a third primary spring here, and I think I'm pretty close, but we'll go ahead and retest it anyway. All right, we have five and a half degrees at about 970 RPMs. Let's find out what top RPM is. All right, we've reached max advance and approximately 1,987 RPMs. So I think this is a good choice for this distributor as we are achieving, hoping to achieve uh, Full advance at 2,000 RPMs. I think this is about as close as I can get on this build. So as we can see here, the three secondary springs that I created for this distributor and their speeds. So the first one was 1837, second one was 1895, and the third one reached 1978 at 11.5 degrees. Well. I finished testing and I've reinstalled this two springs into this distributor and the last thing I do is I always run it through one more time to measure the final numbers. So this distributor hits five and a half degrees at 1000 RPMs, 1976 at 11 and a half, that's full advance, and then returns back to zero at 545. So these are the specs that were provided by the customer and uh, this distributor now matches uh, those conditions. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this and get it sent off to the customer. This video is already long enough so I'm going to go ahead and skip doing the other one that I have to recurve for now. I'll make it a separate video but I'm going to go ahead and stop here. So if you've managed to make it to this point thanks for watching and hopefully you liked it. If you uh, have any questions or comments leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, stay tuned for another episode at some point in the future.